Hey Zelda, can you say carburetor? friends and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. Well as my little helper Zelda said we are working on carburetors today. I'm working on the uh, carburetor set for this Honda CB550 Cafe Racer project that I am working on for a friend here and this is what we're dealing with. You gotta bring it out of the uh, sun, bring it into the workshop here and I'll show you what we're dealing with over some of the struggles we're going to have with this. Here's a carburetor setup on this Honda. This is pretty similar to pretty much any old um, four-cylinder motorcycles. A bank of four carburetors. Now when people do these um, cafe racers, if you've watched my other video on this, which I will link, I said I'm not a big fan of them. No, I think they look okay. But part of the problem is everyone wants to switch to these type of filters, which look really cool. You get rid of the big uh, air box that's uh, built on this thing from the factory and you just install these on the back of the carburetors. Which these don't even look like they are the correct size, but I guess we'll try to make them work. We'll see if they stretch. I guess I'll find that out right now. Oh, we're here on camera. Yeah, they might work. There you go. So kind of a neat look, but they're very difficult to tune. No, that doesn't work very good. They're difficult to tune because these engines are not designed to operate with, with these. They provide a lot more airflow, which you would think would might be a good thing. But since they provide so much airflow, it's very difficult to get these carburetors working correctly with these. So we're going to have to rejet them. Another challenge that I have with this bank of carburetors is that right over here is my ultrasonic cleaner that I use for carburetors and that's obviously not going to fit in there. You can disassemble these and break them down to individual, but there's usually not any reason to do that and sometimes that leads to a lot more problems. So I'm planning not to take them completely apart. So what I'm probably gonna do is see if I can find something. Hopefully this, maybe I'll have to get one bigger, another tub like this, it's a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna fill that up with some solution, probably pine saw, and we are gonna let her soak. Once I have it soaked up and clean, then we're gonna disassemble this whole mess down here. You can see this bike has sat for a long time. All this is just old fuel. And we're gonna have to try to get all these carburetor jets out of here. And hopefully that will be doable because these are in pretty sad shape. But if we can get all that stuff out of there, then we have a couple of new carburetor kits, which is kind of nice. And we have some some other new carburetor parts. And what else did I see here? Uh, some carburetor jets. So we're gonna change these. Hopefully these are the correct ones. We'll give it a try. I did a little bit of research, but if this is what I've got, then this is what we're gonna work with. So let me see what I can get taken apart on these before we find a tub to soak this in and we'll throw everything in and I'll come back after she's cleaned up. What are we doing now? What are we working on? What are we, what are we working on out here? You just want the camera? Yeah. Yeah? You want to take pictures of me? Yeah. Okay, hang on. Okay, it's on me now. You doing it? All right, you're a pretty good camera person, but are we working on a carburetor? Yeah. Can you say carburetor? Carburetor. Yes. She's pretty good help. I got this all tore down. 
And then we're soaking it here in uh, pine salt and water. And let's see, here's all the stuff that is going to be replaced. This is all trash. And there's some of the bits we're keeping. Those are the screws that put the uh, caps on and the retainers for the needle uh, uh, float seat and the pins for the floats. And then this is all the stuff that holds the slides or the slides at hold the slides in. And that is quite a uh, engineering marvel of Honda in the 70s. So we'll take a look at this stuff before it soaks. Get a good look at it now. And we'll take a look at it once it comes out of here. It's probably gonna leave it sit overnight. Flip this thing around a few times, get in here with a toothbrush and do a little bit of scrubbing action. I need to get a little bit more um, fluid, a little bit more uh, pine saw. I ran out, so I may do that as well. But that's where we're at. We'll throw these in as well. Let that soak and see what it looks like. This rack of carburetors has been soaking for about 24 hours now. I'm a little bit under the weather, so I apologize for the, uh, the sniffling and congested sound here. Let's take a look at what we got. Oops. And I'm going to have to rinse all this off with water. There's the float bowls. If you remember what those look like before. And the floats. And there we go, there's the inside of the whole float bowl area. So let me go rinse all this stuff off with water and uh, I'll get you a little bit of video of assembling these carburetors. Not too much because it's kind of a long process and I don't want this video just to be of assembling the carburetors. Let me give this a try, see if we can't um, put together at least one of these on camera. So I have four of these K and L carburetor rebuild kits. These are pretty nice. They come with almost everything you need in here, I believe. Got it all dumped out here. All right, so to begin with, we will install the main jet, which on this one is a little bit odd. It's a little bit different than most. It's just a uh, push-in type of a thing. Usually these are screw-in. This one's push-in, and I don't know what size this one is. And that's going to be a problem because we need to get an up, upgraded size, probably bigger. I think these are 100 is the factory size. And we'll need a 110 or a 115, which just means it has a bigger orifice. You see through there? There you go. But that just presses in right in here. Actually, there's a size on there. My old eyes can see it. Yeah, this one says 100. So that's installed. We'll give a little tap, a tap, a tap, a root here. Now we're going to move on to the um, pilot jet or idle jet or whatever you want to call it. Now this is the stock size, which is a 38. We're not gonna use that. We're going up to 40, which I have these. Actually, these aren't gonna work either. These are the incorrect ones. Yeah, the guy I'm working on this for, it looks like they ordered some parts, but they ordered the wrong ones. As you can see, this one doesn't have any threads on it. That one does. So, once again, we're gonna put the wrong stuff in here. Now, you may be asking, why do we need to change these out? Well, we are moving to a less restrictive air box. In fact, uh, you know, we're getting rid of the air box and going to those individual pod filters. And we also have a uh, 
aftermarket exhaust on this bike. So when you change those things, you need to change your carburetor jetting. Okay, so that's installed. Both of these are going to have to get changed anyway. Next, we'll install our float uh, needle and seat here. Looks like I'm going to have to go online and order some more parts for this. Wish I would have paid a little bit more attention. We actually do have some different uh, carburetor jets, and I'll show you those. The main jets. I'll show you those in a minute. Okay. So this just presses in as well. There's the needle. Inside of here is a little con cave section that this seats into. And then this little thing should be spring action right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little WD-40 on this. Or uh, what do I got? Yeah, WD-40 it looks like. Any kind of little lube. It'll just make the uh, O-ring go in there a little bit easier. Actually, we can just put it right in here. There we go. I was wondering why it wasn't spraying. Take that out. Push this in. Drop this fella in there. There we go. You can see I also added this little retainer. Let me show you one here. This little retainer that holds that uh, float seat in there with the screw. Now we're going to put the float on. There's the float, and there's a pin that goes through. And it should just need just a very little bit of persuasion. I got this little tiny hammer I like to use for this. Just give it a little old tap a -roo. Tap, tap, tap a -roo. And I don't really care for the way that thing is binding up. It should be very free on there. So we're going to punch it out and see if we can figure out why it's binding up. And now you can see, I just switched out the float. I think that one was uh, gummy inside or something. We may have to clean it some more, but you can see how much better that one moves. Now we have a little spring clip thing here. I didn't take these carburetors apart. They were already kind of taken apart when I got it, but uh, I located these things and it looks like it holds this main jet on. So I was wondering since these didn't screw in, how do they stay from falling out? Well, that goes on there and then the bowl goes on and that holds a little bit of pressure down on there. So all we gotta do is screw this bowl down. I am going to also um, replace this gasket if there's a new one in here so we'll replace that i'll screw this bowl down and i'll show you the uh, slide i've worked on a lot of carburetors and uh, these are pretty odd pretty odd i don't know maybe uh, old 70s honda carburetors are all the same but the way that these operate uh, with the slides it's a real pain in the butt but anyway onward and upward we're going to install the needle and I have already installed the clip. Let me see if I can get you on here so you can see this clip. It's called an E-clip. And if you look at the side of this thing, it has grooves. So you can choose where to put that clip, which will then, um, it sits in the bottom of this slide. Let me see if we can show you here. So it sits in the bottom of the slide. So wherever I put that clip, if I put it on the bottom where it is, it's going to actually be lifted higher. If I put it on the top, it'll be lower. So since we are working with a modified engine, I am putting it at the highest setting, which is the lowest clip position. And it goes right in the center of this thing. And then next, I install this little beauty here, which is quite an odd thing here. So let me see if I can show you. There's a, there's a little 
block thing in the bottom of that, and there's a spring in the bottom. So it has a little bit of spring tension like that. And that screws in here, which is going to hold that, um, hold that uh, needle and clip in there. So we're going to install that, two screws. And then there are some more little bits that go between everything here. Let's see if I can get them. So next there's this little bit. See, it's got a round part there and a round part there. That goes in there on top of that ball. And you have to pull this whole thing down and then try to get it on here. Get that ball in there. Then there's another little um, little black piece like that that's got a little divot in it. So you put that on top and then there's a bolt that you screw in here that holds this whole thing down in there. So it's kind of a kind of a work of uh, kind of a work of art from Japan in the 70s. I'm going to try to get this all together and then I'll just kind of show you what it looks like once it in once it's in here because otherwise I may be cursing on screen and I try not to do that too much. Well, I'm not sure how well my explanation to this whole thing worked, but we got that thing in there. Now we got this little bit. See, it's rounded. That goes on top of there. And then there's a little nut that has a recess in it. That should center over that. And then there's this little locking tab. It goes over this whole mess as well. So we just need to tighten that down and give these a little tap over to cover that. Got it, tightened down. So now we're gonna hook this arm up to this shaft here, which is what controls the throttle. You can see that lines up there. <coughs> Excuse me. We got a bolt here. Hopefully we'll line up in here. There we go. And we almost lost the camera. The little uh, cap on the uh, slide was an eight millimeter. This is a seven. And I don't remember which way these went. So I'm gonna find out which way that thing is supposed to sit. And this is also a little uh, lock tab. So I'll get that taken care of. There we go, I've got it. Let me zoom you in there real quick. There we go. And now, if I've done this correctly, the slide should move up when I... See that? So we'll take our brand new gasket. Install that. Install our cover. A couple of screws. That's one cylinder done, three more to go. And I need to go back in and get new uh, jets anyway. So what I'll probably do is I will just do the tops and well, I'll, I can just assemble everything and I'm just going to um, uh, probably put in two two screws in each of these float bowls because they have to come off. Getting these carburetors all finished up. Um, and for the time being, what I did, and this is uh, probably not a recommended thing and someone will for sure complain to me, but um, I use my awesome little super precision drill bit set and I drilled out those main jets. I had a couple of uh, different ones in uh, approximately the right size that was supposed to go in here so I matched up this drill bit that fit them and I drilled out the original ones. So that'll work for now until we get the correct ones on order. Now another problem I noticed as I was getting ready to put these together I didn't take these apart but uh, 
Each one of these float bolts, as you can see, has one, two, three, four bolts holding it together. And I had seven of these in the box of parts I got. Now, why do you think that is? Well, my thoughts are that someone didn't use a JIS screwdriver to remove this. Once again, thank you to my brother who sent me this JIS uh, screwdriver set here from Vessel. It's a very nice uh, screwdriver. Um, Japanese Industrial Standard is the name of what JIS stands for. And they're commonly on Japanese motorcycles and vehicles. Let's see if we can see this here. I'm trying to find a one that's not too chewed up. Usually identified because they have a little dot on the head of them. You can kind of see it right there, that little dot. That's right by my finger. That's how you know they're JIS. Which just means they have a little bit different angle in here. A Phillips screwdriver will fit in there. And a lot of people bitch and complain that the screws are junk. Come to find out you were using the wrong screwdriver all along. Uh, once you start using a JIS screwdriver, working on things like this, you start to realize that you were a jackass all along. The parts were not defective. It was you using the wrong tools. Now, if you look, I have replaced all of the screws with these cap screws. They sell these at, well, I purchased them at Home Depot. And what I'm going to do after this is I'm going to order a bunch because I have, oh, I have my farm background nuts and bolts and stuff like that that I keep because it's nice to have this stuff sometimes it saves the day but I don't have a lot of these because this is a common issue that these strip out from jackassery usually well now I guess I have seven of them put those in here but these are about 60 cents for two of them the 10 millimeter is the best size to use for here Probably an 8 or a 10 would work pretty good, but they didn't have any 8s. They had two packages of 10s, and the rest I had to buy 12s, which I don't know if you can see. They're too good. The 12s are kind of getting close to bottoming out. There's not much room. They go through. Yeah, here you can see it. They go through here, so on here they're just touching this bracket. So the 10s will not go through like that, but that's all right. Put all the 12s on this back side. There you go, you can see. Anyway, this carburetor set is ready to go in. Now installing a set of carburetors in a four cylinder bike like this can be very frustrating. Fortunately, as much as I don't like cafe racers, I will say this about it. When you're not running the air box, this is going to be extremely easy because usually you just have a very small area. You may have seen on some of my videos installing a single carburetor on a dirt bike, that sort of thing. Not too bad, it's one. You have one intake boot and one airbox boot. Well, on these you have four. So you have to struggle the whole thing in and then struggle to get everything lined up. So fortunately we're not having that on here because we're putting those uh, pod filters on here, which like I said, I don't like them, but it's making life easy. We're gonna use a little bit of uh, WD-40 here on these boots. Now, this is another thing on an old bike like this. These rubber boots are usually really hard from age, and then the boots on the airbox are also very crunchy. I've already attached the throttle cables. You see how easy this is going in here. That would not be the case if I had the uh, airbox on here, so. And we just have to push them all in here. And I think, looking at things, oops. This is the way that the uh, throttle cables were routed on this side, but it looks like they're gonna be better off routed on the other side. So I might have to disconnect them and change the routing of them here. But you all get the idea, I hope. I'll come back once I got them installed. It's going to take a little bit of leverage to pop them in here. Like I said, these are very hard. Sometimes what you have to do is hit them with a heat gun to make life a little bit easier. 
Well, like I said, I do not care for these. I love the way they look, but I have dealt with the tuning issues on them. It's one of those things you uh, get a few years behind you and you realize that uh, even though some things look cool, they don't work as good as they look. But there it is. Got these installed. The uh, throttle cable, or the throttle action works pretty good. Let's see? Turning the throttle. So now I'm waiting on a key. I removed the ignition switch and uh, give it to the owner. He's going to get a key made up for it. So I also have to uh, flush this tank and clean the fuel pet cock. So I'll remove that and get that cleaned up. And once we get the key, we'll see if, uh, see if this thing makes any sort of a engine noise. Oh, I also have to make an exhaust hanger here. Let me see if I can knock that out real quick. All right, I just whipped up a little bracket here for now. That uh, just made out of some strap steel that I had laying around. Didn't even paint it. I just kind of rounded the corners over and drilled some holes in it. Um, if this was my project, that's not how I would want it exactly, but that will work for now, and maybe that'll be all that stays on there. I don't know. It's not terrible. I didn't paint it, so um, if it was me, I'd probably make it a little bit wider, maybe drill some extra holes in it just because it would look cool. Whatever. <laughs> um, at this point, uh, the video's already pretty long, so I'm probably going to call it at this. I'm still waiting on the key. I still got to clean the fuel tank out, and then... Uh, we have to see if this thing has any life in it because I have no idea So it ought to be interesting If you're digging what I'm putting out I'd appreciate that thumbs up I'd appreciate a comment down below and if you're not already a subscriber, please consider doing so Thank you very much for watching Get out there and find your adventure Adios